NMR, or nuclear magnetic resonance, is a technique we can use to figure out certain qualities of an unknown sample or compound. But it's kind of unique in one respect, and that is that usually when you do spectroscopy, you vary the frequency of light, and by varying the frequency, you sort of see what that light is accomplishing, and you can relate the frequency of the light to different molecular events going on. NMR is a bit different because you keep the frequency of the light constant, but you vary a magnetic field, an external magnetic field that you're placing your compound in and observing what changes happen as you increase the magnetic field. And so the reason why NMR works is because in an external magnetic field, any nucleus with an odd mass number or an odd atomic number is going to spin or resonate, and it will spin according to the right hand rule in order to either match the external magnetic field, or it will align its magnetic field against the external magnetic field. So here I've just drawn a little schematic. You have the external magnetic field directed vertically, and you have this nucleus, and if it's turning this way, which we'll call plus one half, then it is aligned with the external magnetic field. And usually when things are aligned with their surroundings, they exist at a very low energy state. So if the nucleus is spinning this way, then what we'll see is the magnetic field will be aligned with its external magnetic field. However, it can also be spinning in the opposite direction and that will align its field in the opposite way, which is a very high energy state. And so what we have is for any magnetic field, notice that as the magnetic field increases, the minus one half or the spin anti to the external field is much higher energy. And as you increase the strength of this magnetic field, it's going to increase the energy difference between one direction of spin and the other. And so the way that you set up an NMR environment is essentially you take your sample and you produce a magnetic field moving in some direction through it. At the same time as you're doing that, you're going to be producing a laser that you're shooting through the sample and it's going to hit a detector. And the detector will tell you whether the laser made it through the sample or whether the photon or the laser was used up in the process and what the laser would be used for is flipping the spin of one of your odd numbered uh, mass numbers or atomic numbers, one of your odd numbered nuclei. It's going to flip the spin of that. And the things that you're going to see most with NMR are going to be proton NMR or carbon-13 NMR. But you can use any odd numbered mass or atomic number. Any nucleus that has an odd mass or atomic number can be used in NMR. And so what essentially happens is you shoot through the exact same frequency and remember that the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. So as you, if you keep the frequency constant, you're gonna keep the energy constant. And so we can depict that, let's just say for example, that we have a photon with exactly that amount of energy. That's the energy level we're using. You'll notice that if we're over here, if we're at too low of a magnetic field, the photon will be too big and it will not cause the nucleus to flip from one rotation to the other. If we're over here, then that energy level is too small. And so essentially we keep increasing the strength of the magnetic field until that energy level is just enough to flip it from a very low energy state where its spin is aligning its magnetic field with the external one so that both are going up. It flips it from that to the high energy state where now it's spinning in such a way that its magnetic field is against the external magnetic field. And different qualities of the proton or of the carbon nucleus might relate to what magnetic field strength allows you to have the photon's energy be the exact amount necessary to make up the difference between the two of those. But when you're running NMR, the key things to realize are that you need to have the external magnetic field 
because the external magnetic field is what allows it to spin one way and then later on we can see what causes it to flip the other way. So you have this external magnetic field which you're varying but you have a laser whose frequency you're keeping constant. And so as you vary this external magnetic field, then you're going to get to a point where the energy levels between the one spin state and the other spin state are the exact level where the energy of that photon can cause it to flip. And so that's essentially how NMR works. You have an external magnetic field that causes any odd mass number or odd atomic number nucleus to spin in one way. And then you're shooting through a laser of a constant frequency and changing this field until you get to the point where the energy of that laser is exactly the right amount to turn it from spinning one way with the external field to spinning the opposite direction. And then when we get to NMR plots, we'll go through how to analyze those and how the characteristics of the exact magnetic field where the laser's energy is sufficient to cause that flip. We'll look at how the surrounding conditions, like the number of neighboring protons and spin-spin splitting and other components, cause this, this magnetic field amount to change. But understanding this setup and realizing that the magnetic field is what creates the spin state and that the laser is what allows it to flip from a low energy spin state to a high energy spin state, that's the major theoretical basis of why nuclear magnetic resonance works as such a useful analytical technique.